We have a situation here where we are trying to optimize um, and you know that because if you skip spoilers right to the end there you can say it says find the least possible value of the combined areas, whatever areas those are. Okay, so whenever you hear like I want the least of this or I want the most of this, okay, that's like optimization problem, okay. And you can see this question has lots of pieces to it and I know at first blush, that can be like, oh my gosh, there's so much work. But they're actually trying to do you a huge favor here because they're stepping you through, they're giving you sort of appropriate, like, here's the first stage and then the second stage. And, oh, if you don't know how to do the first stage, hey, guess what? You can just use what we've given you and just move on to the next bits, okay? Um, so they're actually trying to, we call this a scaffold, they're trying to help you out, okay? Now that we know roughly where our brain's going to go, let's have a look at it from scratch. And what I'd love you to do is, with your pen in hand, write with me, I'm going to put it up on the board as well, Example, uh, write with me what you feel is the important salient details. Okay, it says a piece of wire length 10 meters is cut into two pieces and used to form two squares. Okay, pause. There's a lot of information even just there. Okay, so you imagine long straight piece of wire and then they cut it, right? So I'm going to, my first thing that I'm going to put on my um, working is not even like words or anything, it's just a piece of wire that's been cut into two sections. Here's my wire. Um, it's 10 meters all up, so I'm going to do that on the bottom, 10 meters. Here's the situation, right? And then those two pieces get formed into two squares. So this is going to get turned into a square of some kind, so it's bent into shape. And then this guy also gets turned into a square. Maybe it's bigger, maybe it's smaller, I don't know. Let's keep going. It says, uh, let one piece of wire have length x meters. So I've got two pieces of wire here, so I'll just make the left hand one over here, x meters. And then they say, uh, find the side length of each square. Okay, that's a, that's a nice, easy sort of stepping point. So if I've got this guy here, we'll start with it because we've got information, and you bend that into a square, you've got four sides, and because it's a square, each side is equal in length, right? So therefore, can you tell me how long each side will be? X divided by four. X divided by four, perfect. So uh, let's go ahead and write that in. That's X divided by four meters, and it's a square. I probably should have done this to begin with, but they're all equal. So that's good. Um, this is only, though, one of the squares. It says find the side length of each square. So now I've got to come over to this unknown length of wire here. Now, even though it hasn't been given um, a label, I can know how long it is. Um, I could call it, don't do this by the way, I could call it, oh, it's another length, right? It's a Y, who knows what it is, okay? But I would rather not do that for two reasons. Number one, um, the less letters I have flying around, the better, the simpler it will be. And number two, I don't need to. If you have a look at this um, 10 meters here, I've subtracted x, so whatever this ends up being, like suppose that was um, one meter of wire over there, how much would this one be? It would be 10 minus the one, which is nine. If I had used up three meters over here, then this would be 10 minus the three, which gives me seven. So what I'm really saying is, it's 10 take away whatever you used for the first square. Does that make sense? So I'll write that down. 10 take away whatever you used for the first square, okay? Now, therefore, when I come to the square, that's the amount I have to play with. And just like with the original square, I have to do that four times, right? So I guess my length here will be? 10 minus x. And the whole thing is divided by four. Is that okay? In, um, in meters. Okay, fantastic. Tick, that was part A, that wasn't too, um, that wasn't too painful. What is the next thing? It says, um, show that the combined area of the squares is, and then they give you this equation, okay? Yeah. Now, this equation is really important. I'm actually going to ask us to write down part B. This equation here, I have to show that it's the case. So I want this to be my final line, or whatever that is, okay? So I'm required to prove that, what is it? A equals 1 over 8. What's in there? It's a Quadratic of some kind, right? X squared minus 10x. What's on the end there? I can't quite see it. Plus, plus 50? Minus 50. Plus 50. Okay, great. Oh, now this thing here, right? Maybe you want to put some um, colors on this. This guy here is what we call the model. This is the thing we're trying to construct, right? Now, like I said, this question is nice to you. They've actually even told you, hey, this is, this is the model. You need to end up here 
if we wanted to make this question harder, we would just say, find the model yourself. We're not going to tell you what it's equal to. This question is entire in intending to try and sort of nudge you in the right direction. Um, and in such a case as maybe you're running out of time or you do not know how, you can actually just take this model. Um, you won't be able to get the marks of part B, but you could get the marks of part C and D by just using the one that they handed to you. Okay? This is what we want to prove. So how do we do it? Um, what does A stand for? Have a look at the question. It tells you. It's the area of what? It's the area of both squares combined, right? So that's very important. So what I can say is, so here's my proof. The area is equal to, and then I've got like side lengths. So I can turn side lengths into actual areas, right? Um, this first one here will be x over 4. And then what do I do to get the area? I square it because it's a square, right? So that's squared. I then got my other square on the right-hand side, so we'll do the same thing. Like so. Okay. Now, uh, one of the nice things about them having handed me a model is it sort of means I, I don't have to simplify in random directions. I want to head towards this, right? So I notice that you see how they've got the one over eight just hanging out the front, so they've factorized that out. So I can see where that's going to sort of come from. Do you notice I have this common denominator on the bottom? I've got on four, and I've got on four, and they're both squared. Do you notice that? So when you square it, what do you get? Four. When you square it, 16. it'll be 16, right? So what I'm going to get out the front is 1 over 16. That's not 1 over 8, but hopefully, like, this is going to simplify in some way. I'll get some factorization and all that. So if I take that out, what that leaves me with is something simpler inside. I've just got that x squared. Do you see how I factorized the 4 squared out? Okay. And then here I've got hmm, um, 10 minus x all squared. 10 minus x all squared. I think that's 100. Minus 20x plus x squared, but that's in brackets there. So, well, it doesn't matter because it's a plus sign. Is that okay? Is that, is that 10 minus x all squared? Did I do it right? Yeah, okay. Um, it looks like I've done everything. That 1 out of 16 applies to this as well. Um, and hopefully, if I collect a few like terms here, things are going to work out to me and get towards where I know I'm supposed to end up. Okay, say that again. How did I get this? Oh yeah, what did I do here? Um, I have to multiply by, sorry, I have to add the product of these two, yeah? So square this, square this, and then double the product of the middle, okay? All right, um, when I collect like terms, I'm gonna get 2x squared, I'll put this in order, I've got plus 100 out the back. Is this looking like what I want it to look like? Yeah, I'm very close, aren't I? To get to here, all I need to do is factorize out the, these are all even, aren't they? 2, negative 20, 100, so I'm going to factorize that out. Um, it is worth saying that even though they were trying to help us out by giving us um, the model, um, the upshot of that is, because you know where you're headed, you can't leave any steps out. Like, you've got to show every single thing you do, because you're like, you're not going to get any marks for that. They gave that to you, right? So um, now I'm going to finish and say it's 1 over 8 as required. Plus 50 as required. Okay, so this is really good. We've made great progress. Um, you can see part A, part B, just check them again. Did it look good? Have we done everything that's been asked of us so far? Okay, now I'm going to hit pause for a moment because this is the point where the last example we did like half an hour ago picks up. In that example, I just handed you the model and I said, find me a maximum, find me a minimum. Have a look at what part C and D are asking. I think you guys can partly take over from here. I'll show you the example after you've had a go. Part C says, find DA on DX. Hmm, pause for a minute. We normally, normally have something like this, and then we get dy on dx, right? Why is there a da on dx over there? Right, because our, um, our model is about area, okay? And this is why I said before in our first three example questions, it matters what you call these things, because it might be an area, it might be volume, it might be a population, it could be anything, okay? So please use what they're giving you. You're going to need to differentiate. Search for a minimum, and then um, I'll give you a three or four minute head start, and then I'll put my work up on the board just to show you're in the right direction. 